How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for pathology. We have a 19-year-old dude. He's got hemoglobin of 11, should be 13 to 17.5 in males, non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 menstruating women. MCV is 90, should be 80 to 100. So you have a normocytic anemia here, which is classic for anemia of chronic disease. Obviously, in about 50% of USMLE questions, they can give you a low MCV for anemia of chronic disease. So uh, don't memorize that it must be normocytic, but if you do see a normocytic anemia, then it's anemia of chronic disease on USMLE. So we have an intestinal biopsy here. And even if you're not sure what you're looking at, if you couple the normocytic anemia, anemia of chronic disease to something intestinal in the setting of an image where it looks circular with a bunch of cells, this is a granuloma. And in what condition do we see granulomas in the intestine, right? So that makes it pass level. Once we simplify it that way, it becomes pass level, but required a little bit of thinking to get to that step, right? So what's most likely to be seen as patient, additional finding. Should I say hematuria is wrong? So if we relate the intestines to hematuria, that could be something like hemolytic uremic syndrome, usually children where you have Shiga toxin from Shigella or Shiga like toxin from EHEC 0157H7. And that toxin causes inflammation of the afferent arterial is going to the kidney. So you get elevation of creatinine, renin, sometimes you get hematuria. And of course, the inflammation of the afferent arterial is going to the kidney can result in endothelial damage, platelet plugging with thrombocytopenia. The platelets jut out into the microvascular lumina shearing the RVCs that fly by, causing schistocytes. Combination of schistocytosis with thrombocytopenia is called a MAHA, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So in HUS, you have the triad of schistocytosis, thrombocytopenia, and renal issues, quote unquote, which just means, as I said before, elevated renin, it could be creatinine, it could be hematuria. Wrong fucking answer. Choice BIG deposition, dermal papillae is wrong. So this is going to be dermatitis or pediformis in celiac disease. That's difficult, okay? But if you don't know an answer, don't choose something weird necessarily, okay? But some of you may have thought that that was related. But you can get herpes-like lesions, vesicular lesions, usually on extensor areas at the elbows, in celiac sometimes called dermatitis or pediformis. It's not infective, it's just purely autoimmune. But you can have the buzzy histologic descriptor of IgA deposition of the dermal papillae. Don't confuse with pyoderma gangrenosum, which is a, a crater basically on the arm with necrotic debris. You can see an ulcerative colitis or erythema nodosum, redness of the shins, paniculitis, which means inflammation of subcutaneous fat. You can see that in basically any autoimmune disease, sarcoidosis, for instance, but you can also see that in Crohn disease classically with USMLA. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, leukocytoplastic vasculitis is wrong. It's an obscurity. Okay, so this means deposition of immune complexes in the small vessels in the skin leading to palpable purpura. So if you've heard of anoxomia and purpura, well, that's a type of leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Okay, cryoglobulinemia, where you get sometimes purpuric lesions in the skin. Cryoglobulins are immune complexes that deposit at cooler temperatures. Well, that would be a type of leukocytoclastic vasculitis, cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. So in Hanoxomia and purpura, usually pediatrics, you're going to get a tetrad. Number one, palpable purpura, which is your leukocytoclastic vasculitis, where Usually, nine out of 10 times, a URTI, upper respiratory tract viral infection, can sometimes be gastrointestinal. One out of 10 times, where students can misconstrue it as hemolytic uremic syndrome, it's not. But usually, viral infection, then the whole thing with the IgA deposition in the small vessels, in the buttox thighs, and that's your palpable purpura, number one. Number two, it's going to be IgA nephropathy. So, IgA deposition in the sangium, in the kidney, you get hematuria one to three days after your viral infection. Number three, it's going to be arthrologist. Number four, abdominal pain. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, positive calprotectin, correct answer. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, you say, well, Mike, that sounds obscure. It's actually 
very high yield clinically. Okay, it can show up for you some way. And you need to know that this is secreted by neutrophils in the intestines in the setting of inflammation, and it has high sensitivity for IBD. Our diagnosis is Crohn disease. We have a non caseating granuloma from the intestine here. Crohn disease. All your blue, highly basophilic purple cells here, all right, those are your T cells, and then your more uh, eosinophilic pinkish areas that look more amorphous. Those are your multinucleated. Uh, giant cell macrophages. So a granuloma is when you have a collection of macrophages that coalesce, become multinucleated, and they're surrounded by CD4 plus T cells. Okay, so that's what we have here, granuloma, and you have to know that on biopsy, that's past level, that you get non casein granulomas, the intestine and Crohn's disease, you do not get them in ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease transmural, you see not transmural. Okay, you get string sign on contrast enema with Crohn. You're going to get loss of house or lead pipe appearance with ulcerative colitis. You get cobblestoning on colonoscopy with Crohn's. You're going to get uh, crypt abscesses with ulcerative colitis. Okay, so uh, calprotectin, it's greater than 85% sensitive for IBD, uh, but it's not necessarily specific. Sometimes you can get it with positive gastroenteritis, sometimes positive even with NSAID use, but it can be used to help differentiate uh, IBD from things like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, that's non-inflammatory. They will not tell you there's blood in the stool. They will not say anything about mucoid appearance of the stool. Vital signs will be normal almost always. Uh, so laboratory studies normal for IBS. So positive calprotectin, you can see that in IBD. And so let's just knock out the others here, or the, the final one. Segmental fibrinoid necrosis, wrong. That's polyarteritis nodosa, so small to medium vessel vasculitis, and you're going to get segmental ischemic transmural necrosis. It can sometimes be seen with hepatitis B. 30% of people with PAN, polyuricidosa, are positive for hepatitis B. PAN can cause a beaded appearance of the renal vasculature, similar to fibromuscular dysplasia. Okay, but PAN notably does not affect the pulmonary vessels. For some reason, they like that detail for you to assimilate. OID means looks like but ain't. So the necrosis looks like fibrin, but it ain't fibrin. Techn technically, there is some sort of fibrin deposition, but looks like fibrin, but it ain't fibrin on microscopy with pan. Wrong fucking answer.